subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. Today's video comes from a story that was reported in the Washington Post by Carolyn White Johnson and Lenny Bernstein on how the global initiative to find an HIV vaccine is what has made it possible for such a large-scale global effort to find a COVID vaccine. In this video, we'll take a look at the background into HIV vaccine research and why we still don't have one, but think that with the same quality of research and infrastructure, we have a fairly high chance of finding a COVID vaccine soon. My name is Sandhya Ramesh and this is Pure Science. We are all familiar with the HIV virus and the disease it causes, AIDS. AIDS stands for Acquired Immunodeficiency Syndrome and HIV actually stands for Human Immunodeficiency Virus Cis. What we commonly call the HIV virus are in fact two species of lentiviruses. These kinds of viruses are retroviruses, which means that when they attack and invade a host cell, what they do is they transfer a copy of their own genome into the host cell's DNA. This results in the host cell modifying its genome and treating the virus like it's a part of itself. HIV transmits sexually, as we all know, and also by blood transfer as well as from mother to baby. The very first case of HIV infection in humans has been retroactively traced back to somewhere around the year 1908 in the region of what is today the Democratic Republic of Congo. There was a spillover event then where we suspect that the virus jumped from chimpanzees to humans. There were subsequently many cases in Africa through the 20th century, but the disease received major attention and recognition after it was declared an epidemic of an unknown nature in 1981 in the US, where it primarily affected gay men. The virus was not properly identified until 1984 and it got its name HIV officially only in 1986. Since it was declared an epidemic in 1981, over 75 million people have been infected with the HIV virus and about 32 million people have died of AIDS. But today, the virus is manageable. We have many antiretroviral drugs to manage the virus so that it doesn't reach the disease stage and it doesn't become AIDS. It just ends up remaining an infection in our body that has to be managed with drugs. Most of us might have even heard of one of these drug combinations, which is lopinavir retinavir, which is also being tried for COVID in some places. In 1984, according to the Washington Post, authorities had even promised back then that they would be able to deliver a vaccine in two years. But 36 years down the line, we still do not have a vaccine for the HIV virus. There are many reasons for this. HIV is a very complex virus causing a very complex disease and it is one that the body cannot naturally fight off on its own because HIV's attack mechanism is precisely by targeting the immune system. We saw a couple of episodes ago that the immune system has two kinds of responses. The innate response which kicks in first and the adaptive response which is stronger and kicks in later. Innate response is weaker, but it contains cells like macrophages and dendritic cells that kick into action to consume infected cells and to consume pathogens. The HIV virus precisely attacks these two cells. These two cells are also responsible for relaying information to helper T cells, which then trigger the adaptive immune response, which is stronger, but the virus attacks these two cells. Furthermore, Helper T cells that trigger the adaptive response also activate B cells, which are the ones that are responsible for producing antibodies. And the HIV virus also targets the helper T cells. So essentially, antibodies can never naturally form in a person who has been infected by the HIV virus and they can never naturally fight off the infection from their bodies. Therefore, it is almost next to impossible to develop a vaccine that uses a weakened virus or contains only a part of the virus because the vaccine cannot rely on antibodies to form and attack the virus. 
As a result, researchers have been working on newer types of genetic vaccines which can directly work at the DNA and RNA level and help us fight off the virus. These kinds of vaccines are also being adapted and tried out for COVID. There are even viral vector vaccines where the HIV attack mechanism is imitated. The coronavirus RNA is inserted into another virus and this is being done in the Oxford vaccine, for example, where the SARS-CoV-2 RNA is being inserted into a chimp adenovirus that is being used in the vaccine. But apart from just vaccine technology, there has been so much more new science that we've learned, all thanks to the work that has gone into developing an HIV vaccine. Three decades of work into development of an HIV vaccine has led to humanity amassing vast amounts of knowledge about how the immune system works, which is now helping us understand the COVID disease and develop vaccines for the SARS-CoV-2 virus. The work into an HIV vaccine has also led to a development of a global collaborative network of laboratories, testing sites and virology, immunology, research infrastructure, which was built and sustained through billions and billions of dollars in funding for HIV. The Post reports that between the years of 2000 and 2018, about 14.5 billion US dollars were spent on research towards an HIV vaccine. All of these resources and infrastructure was simply repurposed as it is to work on the COVID vaccine, offering an unprecedented scientific advantage in terms of speed of commencement of research and urgent clinical trials and all of the best quality that we are capable of having today. The HIV vaccine had many hundreds of candidates. While about 100 vaccine candidates did not make it through the early phases of preclinical testing, 46 survived preclinical and clinical stages of evaluation. However, currently there are only two candidate vaccines for HIV being evaluated in phase 3 efficacy trials. One in the US and another is in Thailand. By contrast, for COVID, there are currently 140 candidate vaccines in preclinical trial evaluation and 23 in clinical evaluation. Of these, two are already in phase 3 trials, according to WHO. Most vaccine candidates and drug candidates today are repurposed, meaning that they were originally developed for other diseases like HIV or MERS or even Ebola, but are being tried now to fight COVID. And this is normal when it comes to developing drugs and vaccines against any new virus. It is easier to repurpose existing drugs and vaccines to test if they work rather than starting from scratch. Vaccinologists working on HIV started pivoting to the SARS-CoV-2 virus as soon as the genome sequence was shared by Chinese researchers and uploaded online in January. The fact that the research into HIV vaccines has been so diverse and now all the diversity is translating into a COVID vaccine research spells really good news for us. This increases the probability of a favorable vaccine candidate being found sooner rather than later, say experts. But unlike the HIV vaccine trials, which occurred one after the other for safety issues, considering it targets the immune system, COVID vaccine trials are offering an additional advantage because they are all taking place simultaneously right now. And although we haven't had an HIV vaccine for over three decades, authorities and experts have claimed repeatedly that we could realistically look at having a COVID vaccine within the next one to two years. I hope you found this video informative and helpful. If you like our journalism, I request you to please support us as well by contributing to us on our website at theprint.in slash contribute. The link will also be in the description box below along with the link to the Washington Post story as well as a couple of other helpful links. Thank you for watching this video.